Hi, this is Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale Union Pacific 8500 horsepower GTEL Big Blow Turbine locomotive from Scale Trains. These massive engines were in service on the Union Pacific from 1958 through the end of the 1960s. This particular unit, number 18, is preserved at the Illinois Railway Museum. This model is in Scale Trains Museum Quality Series and includes Loksound DCC sound decoders in the A and B units. The locomotive is available for $729.99 direct from Scale Trains. Scale Trains is donating $50 from the sale of each model of UP18 to the Illinois Railway Museum for the preservation of the real locomotive. I don't usually talk about packaging, but this model comes with a pretty impressive box. It's also rather large. You open it up, there's a foam piece on top and the manual in the middle. And then you take that away and it's got the actual locomotive, the A unit, B unit, and tender, and also some other parts in a little pocket on the side. So in that little pocket, there are some extra hoses and other parts, a museum quality scale trains pin, and also a magnifying glass with a little LED flashlight on it, and of course the manual. This manual is actually very useful. Uh, it has an index page, has a couple of pages with history of the real units, has DCC information, and some more DCC information, some features of the models, and also exploded view drawings. The detail on these models is outstanding. The A unit includes a cab interior, openable cab doors, and a see-through grill in the rear. There are numerous freestanding parts. The paint is very evenly applied, though the yellow looks a bit dull to my eye. The red stripes on the UP shields are slightly out of register. They don't go all the way up to the blue area like they should. All of the small writing on warning labels and the builder's plate is legible with magnification. The front of the A unit includes a scale trains coupler, uncoupling lever, hoses, and numerous other details like freestanding grab irons and windshield wipers. The headlight, number boards, and class lights are operable. We'll take a closer look at the lights a bit later. The rear of the unit also has amazing detail. The long black hoses and cables are made out of a flexible material and are designed to connect to the B unit. For myself, I don't think I would make all of those connections unless I had space to leave this model set up on a layout all the time. There is even a little nighttime operation light that illuminates the area around the door so the crew can see where they're going if they have to move from the A unit to the B unit while the train is in motion. The roof has quite a few photo etched grills and many other details, including a neat looking horn casting. The underside of the model has more great detail, like sander lines and cabling under the sill. I really like the air reservoirs and plumbing. The model picks up electricity from all 12 wheels, and all six axles are powered. One of the wheel sets on the lead truck is narrow in gauge. The B unit has more amazing detail. There are very finely rendered stirrups and freestanding grab irons. The unit even has doors that slide open. I've opened a couple of them so you can see inside. The doors reveal the jet engine, though at least one of the doors only reveals a full-size capacitor from one of the electronics boards inside the unit. The front end of the B unit has connections for the hoses from the A unit, as well as numerous other details like MU hoses and uncoupling levers. The B unit is also equipped with scale trains couplers. The back end of the B unit features the jet exhaust. It's a little hard to see, but the turbine blades actually spin when the turbine sound is engaged. The top has freestanding photo etched walkways, lift rings, and numerous grills. The intake housing on the top of the model is a standout feature. The underside of the B unit also includes cabling and sander pipes. Like the A unit, all of the axles are powered and all of the wheels pick up current. Both the A and B units include feelers that will trigger flange squeals and other track noises. This only works in DCC. All of the wheels on the B unit are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. 
The tender includes chains that can be attached to the trucks if desired. There are small hooks on the trucks for this purpose. If you're running the model on sharp curves, you might want to let them dangle as shown here. This is the way the tender came out of the box. On the tender, there are a few spots where there is some bleed along the border between the red stripe and the yellow. On my model, there is also a fairly noticeable scratch on one end. The front of the tender includes uncoupling levers, MU hoses, freestanding ladders, and a brake wheel. I noticed that the brake wheel stand is mounted slightly crooked and the brake platform is warped. The rear of the tender has a functional backup light. Like the A and B units, the tender is also equipped with scale trains couplers. All of the couplers on all the models except the one in the rear of the tender are mounted at the correct height according to the KD height gauge. The rear coupler is arguably the most important since that's what connects the model to the train and it's low. The top of the tender has a photo etched deck and steps. The railings are made of a flexible plastic so they can take some bumps and not break. The hatch detail is excellent. The bottom of the tender has excellent brake system detail. The air reservoir on one side is hollow in the back, but that isn't really noticeable when the model is on the track. The tender is equipped with a DCC decoder to operate the rear light. All of the wheels pick up electricity, and all are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The A unit weighs 25.7 ounces by itself. The B unit weighs 21.1 ounces. The tender weighs 5.6. Both the A and B units together registered 8.1 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. The low sound decoders in both the A and B units are equipped with Keep Alive circuitry to help the model over dirty track. Since we're filming the model on a small table, I've omitted the tender from the consist for the moment. The model runs very smoothly. With the sound off, it's very quiet. The A unit has diesel sounds that are activated with the F8 key. The real locomotive had a small diesel engine so that it could be moved without running the turbine. The turbine is activated with the F3 key. The model is programmed so that it will only reach its top speed when the turbine is engaged. Because this model is so large, we set up a test track outside to run it properly. Okay. The headlights on the model are activated with the zero key, and they can be dimmed with the F7 key. This model has a really neat feature in that it has multicolored class lights. These are activated with F6, and it just cycles through. There's also a cab light and lit number boards that are activated when the sound is activated with the F8 key. There are also nighttime lights, which are activated with the F5 key. There's a backup light on the rear of the B unit that is activated with the F10 key when the model is in reverse. The backup light on the tender is activated with F0 when the model is in reverse. As it comes out of the box, all three models are programmed to respond on address 3, 
If you want to reprogram the model to match the cab number, you'll have to program each unit separately. Overall, I think this is an excellent model. It has really, really amazing detail, and it's a great runner. Having said that, I am a little bit disappointed with some of the quality control problems. I, I really think at this price level, you shouldn't have problems like that. I don't know if any of those things in and of themselves are noticeable enough to warrant taking a spike off, but it is disappointing. I am going to take a spike for the coupler height, and I'm going to take a spike for the out-of-gauge wheel set. So my final verdict is 8 out of 10 spikes.